Hey, I am recording now. Seven Leaf Plot. Let me grab my thing because I came up with ideas for all of these. Or at least tried to. Okay. Um, everybody in this room, which now is only six people, not six, seven people. Um, everybody write down on the corner of your sheet a number between um, one and 60, please. Again, awesome. Today's 2-2, two -two, and we're doing 2-2. Two -two. Anybody cares about that? I thought about that actually. A little ballet. All right. Um, so uh, let's get your numbers. 42. Yeah. You stinker. Tegan? 13. 13. Risky. 27. 27. It's your favorite number? Your second favorite number. What's your favorite number? Four. Four. 32. 32. Why do you like that one? <laughs> what? You guys? Crazy. 53. I'm happy. I was hoping for a repeat. Yeah? Seven. Seven. Whoa. All right. So here's what a stem and leaf plot looks like. Kind of looks like a um, cross. Um, you always have the larger value on the left and the smaller value on the right. In this case, it's going to be tens and ones. It's a way to organize data. It looks like my lowest number here is 7, and my highest number here is 52. So what is the tens place with a 7? I'm going to write 0 here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, you shouldn't be skipping spaces here because that implies, like, if you have a big gap, it's supposed to visually show you that you're missing a lot of numbers. Um, so then you start just lining them up. Uh, this is 42. This is 13. 27. We got two 32s. We got a 52. A lot of twos over here. And a regular old 7. Interesting. Look how alike you guys are. Four twos, two sevens, and a three. Okay. Now, with a stem and leaf plot, you always need to have a key on the side that says something like this. Um, if there was a two and a line and a four, that means 24. You, d you can pick a number that is in your set, like I could have picked 27. <coughs> Or obviously, I can pick a number that's not in the set, like 24, as long as it shows somebody like what, how to read the numbers. You could also have hundreds over here and tens over there. You could have thousands over here and hundreds over there. Any way you want. It's a quick way to um, organize and look at numbers. I have a question on that. Yep. Could you eat, like hundreds and tens? Like, what if it was like then, then what they do sometimes is they'll have hundreds and then tens and ones in the third category. Um, but usually it's, they would round it to the nearest one. Okay. All right. <coughs> Constructing a pie chart. Okay. Um, uh, what did I decide for this one? Oh. Um, okay, so we're going to vote on best starburst color because everybody has an opinion on this. Can we all agree? Oh. Does everybody have? Yeah, everybody has a strong opinion. <coughs> For what? Did we do it with the starburst colors? Okay. All right, so we've got yellow, of course, uh, orange. I'm just doing colors instead of the actual flavors. Um, there's what? Uh, red and there's pink which I believe are lemon, orange, cherry, and strawberry, but I'm not quite sure. Okay. All right. No changing your opinion based on what somebody else says. Michael, what's the best Starburst flavor? Yellow. Whoa. Yellow. Whoa. Yeah. We're all outraged people at home. Pink's over here. Pink. Pink? Red. Red. Agreed. Thank you, Zach. Mm. Nobody likes that stupid orange. Get out of there. All right. So to make a pie chart, you make a circle. Oh, probably you're better at drawing a circle than I am because that's my circle. 
<clears throat> anybody thinking right now, like, I'm a 17-year-old person, or I'm an 18-year-old person, and that's what I drew. Mm, I'm 38. That's my circle. I do this for a living. <laughs> okay. Um, put a center in your circle. All right, next thing you want to do is you want to figure out the totals of each one. This is one, two, and four, but together we make up seven people, right? So grab a calculator. You are going to need it today after all. So what am I doing in my calculator right now? Uh, one, one divided, divided by, by seven. seven. Yes, over here I did one divided by seven, two divided by seven, and four divided by seven. If you add all those percentages up, you should get one, or maybe 1 1.01 or 0.99 if you're rounding a little weird. Now, Obviously, your picture does not have to be perfect. Just in case you're wondering about that. I mean, it's almost perfect, my picture so far. Whew, looks so good. Very much, very Pokemon. So, um, what you're going to draw is you're going to draw approximately. Now, 57 looks a little easier, right? Because we know that that's at least a little bit more than half. So, uh, I'll say down there is my 57%. And then I've got orange, which is like two sevenths, which is what's supposed to be like 29%. Let's see, a quarter, I, I'm trying to think like a quarter right now would be 25%, right? So I want just a little bit more than a quarter, maybe like that. Now, when you're making a key for your pie graph, you can do this in two, oh, three different ways. One, you could literally on the side have all of them listed and then have like a key next to your graph where it shows it, you can actually just write it in there. <coughs> or you could do something fancy like <clears throat> color coordination. I don't have red. I'm ready to get angry. Okay. <laughs> So here's my yellow one, and this is yellow. Here's pink, and that's my pink one. Here's my red one. How we all feeling right now? Feeling really good, class? Does that feel good? Huh? Mixed them all up. Mixed them all up? I don't know. I think it's more of a uh, trolling to uh, get two of them right and then one extremely wrong. Uh, if I had all the right colors, I definitely would have mixed them up, for sure. But I, didn't, I had one, so it was mine. Yeah, I'm still being like an uncle. Don't worry. All right. Um, so I assume everybody has that uncle in their family who's like, <laughs> right? Like, no matter what. Yeah. You're like, I'm tired. And they're like, why tired? I'm your uncle. Get it? Because you're tired. Your dad knows that one? No way. All right. Uh, <laughs> Every dad knows that one. All right, number three, right? Okay, we're going to do the same thing with our Pareto chart. Um, our Pareto chart is going to be, um, uh, it, a Pareto chart is essentially like a bar graph, except for the bars uh, aren't, um, don't, they're not a histogram, so they don't have to touch this time. Um, and it's always for qualitative data. Um, so I'm just going to draw some axes here. This is a Y, this is an X. Uh, and we, something we really should remember, which we can go back and fix on the other two, is you always should have um, a title on your graph. Um, it's really important, so I'm going to write our favorite, maybe they're not our favorite numbers, but they're the numbers we picked, right? And this one was uh, Starburst Colors. Um, and yes, it is annoying to always have to write. Um, this kind of nonsense, but also, um, I'm just trying to train you so that when you take the AP test that you automatically always put a label on it. Um, so again, these are our starburst colors.
Okay, and I'm gonna put my edges of my lines. I'm expecting, can you kind of see where I'm going here? I'm gonna have one that's going up like that, one that's like here, like these three right there, I just drew either end of them. And my tallest one was four, and on the side is going to be my frequency. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, in a Pareto chart, um, the categories go in order, and they always go high to low. So you pick the one that is the most favorite first, which is pink. So pink. Draw amazingly straight lines like I just did. It's so funny, Tegan. <laughs> just laughing for no reason. Okay, we got pink, and then we got red, which is obviously the right answer. I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I will admit that pink's my second favorite.